The observable universe is roughly 93 billion light years wide across all directions. But that's just with the data collected from the photons that have had the time to reach us. And interestingly enough, because of the cosmological expansion, things are getting further away for us to be able to know what lies beyond. All the galaxies, stars, nebulas, black holes, etc. that humankind has observed are spread across this stretch of 93 billion light years. Our knowledge about the night sky has expanded from a few planets and stars to billions of galaxies within a few centuries. But who is in charge of naming the enormous number of celestial objects present in the universe? What's with the weird alphanumeric names given to these objects? Let's understand it in this video. My name is Siddharth and you are watching The World of Science. Back in the days, celestial objects known to man were the ones that were easily visible by the naked eyes. People in the past mostly derived the names from Greek or Roman mythology. For example, the Sun, the star of our solar system, was named after Greek god Helios. Later this was replaced by its Latin rendition Sol, a root word that is still used to refer the Sun in the present day. The five planets, namely Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, which were easily visible with the unaided eye, have been observed for all human history as far as we can tell. Romans named these planets according to their movements and appearance. The discovery of Uranus and Neptune took place in relatively modern times. Initially, being named after their discoverers, the adoption of names with mythological references seemed more convenient. Comets, on the other hand, were named by the year they appeared in, like the Great Comet of 1882, or the people associated with their discovery like Comet Fay. Over time, with the advancement in telescope technology at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, astronomers all around the world would discover new celestial objects every now and then. But these objects were rarely cross-checked to ensure they hadn't been already spotted and named, and there were no consistent patterns of naming. Thus, this led to scientific confusion due to lack of proper records and sometimes things had to be rediscovered, like asteroids. They quickly became a problem as astronomers and publishers immediately began compiling their own star catalogues, many of which used unique names for the same stars. This called for the need for a regulating body that would standardize the name of the newly discovered objects and provide a nomenclature for the disputed ones. Founded in 1919, the International Astronomical Union is an international association of professional astronomers who assign designations and names to celestial bodies and any surface features on them. Its mission is to promote and safeguard the science of astronomy in all its aspects. One needs to understand the difference between the terms name and designation. Name refers to the term we use in everyday life, whereas designation is solely alphanumerical and used almost exclusively in official catalogues and for professional astronomy. The names of the major planets were already in common use before the formation of IAU. Later on, the IAU membership formally adopted these names as we know them now in the English language. The naming of planetary features is based on the category they fall in and the certain themes which include myths, characters and names of places from famous folk tales, names of scientists, etc. IAU Working Group and Task Group members have listed the themes which are available on their official websites. Natural satellites orbiting the planet in the solar system have also their own set of rules for naming. They are assigned a provisional name comprising the letter S, followed by the year of discovery and a number indicating the order of discovery within that year. When the satellite is confirmed, the discoverer proposes a name. The IAU finally decides on the assignment of the name, priority given to the ones proposed by the discoverers. Now let us look at the comets. When a comet is discovered and confirmed, it is announced by the Central Bureau of Astronomical Telegrams or CBAT on behalf of the International Astronomical Union IAU through various publications. A designation is given according to the following rules. A prefix describing the type of comet, which can be P for a periodic comet, C for a comet that is not periodic, 
x for a comet for which a meaningful orbit cannot be computed, d for a periodic comet that no longer exists or no longer is found, and i for all interstellar objects whether comets or asteroids. This is followed by the year of discovery. Lastly, an uppercase letter identifying the half month of observation during that year, like A for the first half of January, B for the second half and so on, and a number representing the order of discovery within that half month. Let's take an example. The third comet discovered in the second half of January 2013 and classified as periodic would be designated as P-2013 B3 or P-2013 B3. To complete the designation, comets are either given the name of the discovery team or one or two individual members of the team. As we look beyond the solar system, things seem to get a bit amusing. When a new star is discovered, it is a standard practice to designate them alphanumerically. These designations are practical since star catalogues contain billions of objects. A designation consists of two parts, a leading acronym and a sequence value. The acronym is the code specifying the catalogue or collection of sources. The Bonner Dutch Masterung BD, the Henry Draper Catalogue HD, and the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory Star Catalogue or SAO are the names of few catalogues. The sequence value is a string of usually alphanumerical characters that uniquely identify the source within the catalogue. Common values for the sequence are running number that is the order in which the star was catalogued in the list or based on the coordinates of the object. Stars in binary or multiple systems are usually labelled by capital letters from the Latin alphabet if the star has a common colloquial name or simply by a catalogue number. So in a binary system, the brightest star will get capital A and the dimmer one gets the letter capital B. For example, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius or Sirius A, has a white dwarf companion which is catalogued as Sirius B or Alpha Canis Majoris B or HD 48915B. The same star can appear in different catalogues, each time with a different designation. Computers generate most modern catalogues using high-resolution, high-sensitivity telescopes. One such catalogue is the Guide Star Catalogue 2 which has entries on over 998 million distinct astronomical objects. Objects in these catalogues are designated based on their position in the sky. SDSSP J1532596-003944.1 is an example where the SDSSP indicates that the designation is from the slow and digital sky survey preliminary objects and the other characters show celestial coordinates. Julian Epoch being J, Wright Ascension being 15 hours, 32 minutes, 59.96 seconds, Declination being minus 0 degree, 39 minutes, 44.1 seconds. Galaxies have also been catalogued in large numbers, but only a few have well-established names, such as the Andromeda Galaxy, the Magellanic Clouds, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Astronomers work with the numbers from certain catalogues, such as the Messiah Catalog. For example, Messiah 109 or M109 is a spiral galaxy having the number 109 in the catalogue of Messiah. The well-known galaxies appear in one or more of the catalogues but with a different number. Black holes don't follow any particular conventions. Supermassive black holes are numbered based on the galaxy whose core they reside in. Examples are NGC 4261, NGC 4151 and M31, which derive their designation from the new general catalogue and the list of messiah objects. Other stellar black holes are catalogued by their constellation and the order in which they were discovered. But black holes are mostly designated by their position in the sky and prefixed with the instrument or survey that discovered them. For example, RxJ1131-1231 observed by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. No way are assigned designations according to their constellation together with the year their superlumination event occurred. Example, Nova Cygni 1975. Supernovae are also named after the year of occurrence, together with SN and an uppercase letter like in SN 1987A. If a single year is flooded with supernova events, a double lowercase designation is used, for example SN 1997BS. 
Exoplanets are designated in a way somewhat similar to stars, which consist of a proper noun or abbreviation, sometimes with associated numbers, followed by a lowercase letter. The first part is usually the exoplanet's widely recognized host star, common or astronomical catalog name, or the scientific instrument or project that discovered the exoplanet. For example, HD 189733b, a bluish planet where it may rain glass sideways. The lowercase letter B stands for the planet in order in which the planet was found. The first planet found is always named B, with the subsequent ones assigned C, D, E, F and so on. The star that the exoplanet orbits is implicitly known as A of the system. Stars are designated with capital letters and planets receive lowercase designations. When a bunch of them are discovered at once, then the planet closest to its star is named B with more distant planets named C, D, E and so on. IAU has now started adopting proper names for exoplanets. In 2015, the organization launched an online contest allowing people to vote on names for a few dozen exoplanets. It is not allowed to propose names of pet animals, names of individuals, places or even principally known for political, military or religious activities or living individuals, etc. The official website of IAU states, if a scientific designation for the object already exists, the public name will not replace it, but will be recognized by the IAU as the appropriate publicly used name for the object and be published along with due credit to the organization or individual that proposed it. We may then use internationally this public name along with or instead of the scientific designation permanently and without restrictions. So if you someday discover a planet, what would you want to name it? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Check out our new Hindi channel from the description below. Do follow us on Instagram for daily quality content that'll make you fall in love with science. Comment down the topics that you want us to cover in our next videos. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.